We have this miter saw that doesn't have a proper place in our workshop yet. Till now we have been storing it on the floor, which is a terrible solution. So today we will use what we have in our workshop to build a mobile miter saw stand with a huge cabinet and foldable work surface extensions. Since we will be using only the material we have in our workshop, we will have to make some compromises and improvise a little bit. We had these 18mm offsets of interior grade plywood left over from a project we made for a client that would be perfect for the mainframe and the work surface extensions. Since it's not weather resistant, interior grade plywood wouldn't be my first choice when building a project for our workshop. The humidity level in our workshop can vary quite a bit depending on the season. Therefore there is a small risk of plywood delaminating at some point. After cutting the first sheets of interior ply, I still had some components that had to be made using 18mm ply. For those, I took the regular birch ply we always use. After I cut the 18mm parts, I realized the 12mm sheets I had weren't big enough to make the cabinet doors and the back panel in one piece. So I decided to split the back panel into two smaller components and used a dull tail joint to ensure the part would be rigid after assembling. After the CNC operations, I removed the support tabs from the 18mm components and trimmed the edges. And then I was ready to assemble the miter saw station. The first task was to put together the main cabinet. And the CNC joints made this process fast and simple. And it felt like assembling a set of large Lego pieces. Anyway, before attaching the bottom panel, I had to install the door component. Then I could attach the top panel. We had almost finished the central element of the miter saw station. I just wanted to reinforce the cabinet corner joints with dollars. The same way we did when building the table saw project. So I drilled the holes in the corner joint a little bit deeper and hammered the dollars in them. We will ensure the cabinet won't come apart after hours of using the miter saw station. At this point I wasn't entirely sure what should the next step be. I knew I had to assemble the work surface extensions and the hinge mechanism and I was hesitant before assembling anything or gluing smaller components together. This was the first time I made a sliding hinge mechanism and I knew if I put together the parts in the wrong order I might not be able to assemble the project. So I took it one step at a time. First I glued the small plywood discs in the extension holder part. These will serve as the rotation axis for the hinges. Then I assembled the extensions holders on. On one end there was an attachment hinge that we will connect to the table's extension. On the other end I glued smaller plywood discs that will slide in the hinge mechanism slots. Afterward I could attach one of the sliding slot components to the main cabinet and add the holder arm and the other sliding slot component. Then I could secure it in place with a couple of screws. And after the screws were in place, I could do the same steps to the other side of the cabinet. The first half of the hinge mechanism was in place and we could work on the work surface extensions. As the first step, I added the frame components to the extension table tops. Then I added the hinge component to the side of the cabinet and installed one of the table panels. To secure the extension, I added the second hinge holder to the cabinet secured the attachment in place by adding a couple of screws from inside of the cabinet. At this point I wanted to see if the hinge mechanism I came up with would work, so I had to attach the holders arm to the table panel. It worked and I felt relieved. Until this moment I didn't know how well the extension would fold open and close, but now I know it's working and I can attach the extension to the other side of the cabinet as well. To finish the cabinet, I added fence components to the extensions and secured them in place by adding the dollars. And the miter saw station was done. Well, not exactly. Before attaching the miter saw to the cabinet, we had to install the casters. The miter saw station has to be mobile, so we can move it around the workshop effortlessly. And finally, it was time to attach the miter saw. To position it parallel to the extension fences, I clamped an offcut to the extensions and aligned the saw. After, I could secure the saw in place and remove the offcut. Now we finally have a proper miter saw station in our workshop. 
and thanks to the work surface extensions we can cut longer and larger wood pieces with less effort and the plywood hinge mechanism allows us to fold the table extensions to the side of the miter saw cabinet so it takes less space in the workshop when we are not using the saw. In the end I think this was a perfect project to use our plywood offcuts on. But we still have a lot of cool and useful ideas to make for our workshop. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.